Hey guys, how are ya? This is uh, Adam and Michelle. It's not like I'm waiting for you guys to respond. Um, Adam and Michelle Carey from adamandmichellecarey.com. We're excited you're joining us today for Facebook Live. And uh, we don't do these near as often as we would like to, but we had an, uh, yeah, true. We had an important uh, message on our heart today, so we wanted to share. Um, any, any opening thoughts before I dive in? No. Okay. Go ahead and dive in. So um, you may have saw the title, This One Thing Could Save a Life. And you might be thinking, how does that relate to network marketing? Trust me, it will if you'll just hang in there. And uh, we really think today's topic is, is, is really deep. It's going to be a little deeper than our normal stuff. I know we like to use a lot of humor, but we're going to end on a high note, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not a doom you and gloom. You promise? Glo yeah, we're not doom <laughs> and gloom, but um, this is just something that ties into some of the stuff that we're doing, and we think this message needs to get out there. So I'm going to start with a story. There's a story that um, I, I read recently and uh, I was talking to Michelle about it today and she just came across it recently too, even though we didn't talk about it. Um, I don't know all the details of it, but I'm going to do my best to recap. There was these two guys, um, I'm going to just make up some names. Uh, there, was a, there was a guy his freshman year of high school, he was walking home, and let's call him Jeff, and he noticed another guy walking home from uh, from school, let's say his name is Tom, and Tom was carrying a stack of books home from school, and Jeff was kind of making fun, snickering to himself, like, what a nerd, why would you carry all your books home? That's just kind of silly. And then right about that time, Tom got bullied by some other kids, got knocked over, the books went flying, and Jeff really had some compassion for the guy, so he ran across the street, helped, helped him up, helped him get his books, and they struck up a conversation, and uh, Jeff ended up inviting Tom out to play football that weekend. And the long story is they actually became super close friends. And that was freshman year. Well, fast forward to senior year of graduation, graduation day, Tom ended up being the valedictorian. He was super intelligent. And uh, they, you know, I think Jeff was encouraging him, you know, a little nervous before the speech. And what Tom began to share at the, uh, at the, at the, at the graduation speech was the power of of a friendship, the power of encouragement. Because he began to share about that day that he was carrying books home and he got bullied that Jeff ran over to give assistance. And what people did not know was Tom was actually on his way home to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And the reason why he carried his books home is he didn't want his mom to have to go clean out the locker. And what Jeff found out that day is he actually saved somebody's life, which became his best friend, simply because he had some compassion. He ran across the street, he encouraged him. He became a friend, and that's kind of today's topic. And so um, we are in the middle of a series right now of, of cold market prospecting, and we use something. We talk about something in video one um, that has been getting a lot of attention, which is about becoming a professional encourager. Michelle, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, you know, with becoming a professional encourager, it's basically a mindset shift. And tying it just in what we do as uh, network marketing professionals and just being out there prospecting in the cold market, our whole um, notion and standpoint is if you could just go out and just be encouragers yeah. to people rather than seeing yourself as a recruiter or someone in network marketing that's wanting to build their business, yes, um, you know, that's what we are. And, and yes, we do need to go out and prospect in the cold market. But if you could just have your mindset shift and focus on being professional encouragers instead. So for example, um, you know, we're one day we we're boarding a plane, me and my friend Tina, and we we're on our way to Corpus Christi. And we just had a bunch of things happen with our flight anyway we were super flustered we finally got on to that i don't know what they call it that tunnel boarding the jetway the, the jetway i think that and um i just I'm, see uh, uh sorry jim carrey yeah fall, off flying of off of that anytime i think of a jetway <laughs> yeah hey sorry. linda what's going on and so we are really flustered and we're just over the day because like you know how it is when you get to the airport and um i'm just always open to and this is what we want you guys to adopt also, just have your radar open yeah. and just always be open to initiating contact with people. And so I just kind of noticed this lady in back of us and um, I just really had the sense that she wanted someone to talk to. So normally, you know, you just have in your mind, okay, this could be someone that I could talk to and maybe she'll be a good person for our business. Um, and long story short, she was headed to Chicago because, um, 
she her daughter had passed mm. and um just in that moment you know you put you take off the business hat and you put on the hat of professional encourager mm -hmm. and the reason why we really want to bring this up is you know you're going to go out there and you're going to meet people you're going to meet a lot of people once you like open yourself up to being the initiator of communication and contact you're going to run into a lot of people and a lot of times you're going to run into people where that that moment in time isn't the right time to bring up your business but that's okay because overall like for network marketers i just look at us as carrying hope yep. and we we're able to bring hope to her that day and you know i didn't know the right words to say but i know that she wanted someone to talk to to kind of like take off that burden off her shoulders so we were able to be there to listen and be that professional encourager yeah i had some just i was thinking before we uh i had some notes here i'm gonna share in a minute but just as we were preparing we didn't script any of this out but just of of times even today had a situation where we i was driving to drop hannah off we take her to a little day school a couple times a week because um, when you work from home and you and you are a stay at home dad or stay at home mom, like you get nothing done, and so we're like, go play and go learn and be abundant. So, I saw this uh, at a stoplight. I saw this guy. He was out in front of the gas station, and his his arms, his head was just in his arms like that, and he was just sitting there. And I was like, man, like I can't, I can't see that and just like drive by it. I was like, man, if he's still there, because I'm not gonna go by with my daughter, I want to go talk to him, see what's going on. And so I dropped off Hannah, and sure enough, about 30 minutes later, he was still there. <clears throat> and um, I I pulled into McDonald's, and I got a cup of coffee and, and some gift cards, and I just walked over and struck up a conversation with him, and he was still in the same position. He was like, just, you know, you could just see depression on his face. And we had a great talk, and he was going through some pretty rough stuff, and I just got a chance to, he was super thankful for the coffee. And I'm not saying this to, to like show off, like, hey, look what I did. I'm just, you know, to give you ideas of how you could encourage people. I had no intention of trying to prospect this guy for the business. What went through my head and something I was thinking about earlier this week, and I'm going to share some stats on it, is, is in my morning quiet time, I was reading the Bible and I was praying. And for whatever reason, God put suicide on my heart. And I know this is a very sensitive topic because we've had family, we've had friends that have experienced this. And literally, we could be the change agent by simply stopping and encouraging somebody that could, I, you know, who knows what was going through that guy's head when he was sitting there with his head in his arms. I mean, maybe it wasn't suicide, but maybe it was. And maybe just somebody stopping to like show compassion that we do notice you. And, you know, I got a chance to pray with him and just call out his value. You know, God paid such a high price for that guy and he needs to know his eternal value because God's thoughts for him outnumber the grains of sand and if nobody tells him, then he could be a statistic. You know, God puts people in front of our path all the time. When when I was I was at the grocery store just this week, and I had this lady who was reading a magazine off to the side. So I figured, okay, she's not in line. So I got in line, and then she's like, oh, and she grabbed her basket. And I said, oh, you know, you were first. Go ahead. And she said, no, 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 it's fine. So we got into conversation, and I just said, I said, you're not in a hurry today. And she goes, no, not today. And I go, wow, that's pretty rare. And she began to tell me that it was the third anniversary of her losing her mom and she was on her way to the cemetery. And I was like, man, that's that's pretty deep. And and But if I wouldn't have asked questions and I would have been like, ooh, here's a sharp lady, I'm going to prospect her about my business, not the right time. And I walked out and I actually went and sat down and I just was like, you know what? Like this lady needs encouragement. I don't know. I can't fix her solution. I can't bring back her mom. But I just waited for her and I just asked her name when she walked out and I just said, um, I said, hey, ma'am, do you mind if I get your name? And I said, I just wanted to stop. And, and I know today must... There we go. We, lo we lost you for a second. I said, I know today must be a pretty rough day. I just wanted to encourage you and offer to pray with you and um, just, you know, be a friend for just a minute. And she declined uh, me praying with her, but she was just super thankful that, you know, I stopped. And we've had so many of those types of encounters and they don't all... My, my master scheme is not to lead to business it's just to encourage people and so before i read this did you have any other thoughts on that before um yeah so i think like the biggest takeaway in that is that when you're out and about and you know you're in the back of your mind thinking about like running into people about like prospects about mm -hmm. your business that you want to bring in 
to your business or bring your business up is one just just adopt the listening skills and and be able to ask questions yeah if you've followed any of our trainings mm -hmm. and um, we always talk about that you know just being able to ask questions to uncover needs um, that you could fulfill with your products your service or your business opportunity and a lot of times that need is gonna go beyond that and the need is going to be something else mm -hmm. so we just really want to make sure that you know as you are out there um, that the the ability to transfer the hat from business to you know to just being an encourager is is just an you know you're just sensitive to that you know yeah. you're just sensitive to other people and what they're going through and being okay with with it not resulting in business. I think in the mm -hmm. beginning, we put so much pressure in ourselves to grab the name and number. Oh, how many names and numbers did we get today? And um, I think with that pressure, it almost flips the script. Mm -hmm. See, when you go out and you're, you don't put any pressure on, you know, cold market recruiting and you don't put any pressure on yourself and then people are just more attracted to you and you end up having more opportunities brought to your way because you're not putting all of that pressure an expectation on it so yeah I was thinking some of the most powerful moments I've had is like on my busiest days where I'm just really selfish I've got an agenda and I'm trying to hit my schedule and the bank lines taking forever and then the the people at you know the grocery store are just taking forever and it's like come on people like get your act together but I end up running into somebody that really needed encouragement recently on a, on a trip out. I had one of those days and I was super frustrated and it just started to get to me and then I ran into a lady in the parking lot that was like in one of those motorized carts. She couldn't even load her stuff into the car. I got a chance to talk with her and pray with her and, and just to like be a friend for a minute and she was just like blown away that like someone took a minute out of their schedule. But you know, here's something that's weighing pretty heavy. We're going to end on a high note, okay? So just hang in there. This is serious stuff. But we had a, a mentor of ours this week um, lose his son to a car accident and it's it's so it's tragic it's it's so sad and and we have everybody has questions there's more questions than answers obviously but um the point i'm sharing that is we just don't know like if we're just busy working and just and doing our agenda and we're not taking time to create memories and and spend it with our loved ones and really value people like what's really the point right and so i've got i've got something we're about to go even deeper here for a second i think it's important for awareness and then i've got um kind of a a goal for us as a profession okay so this this week i had this thought of um suicide and again i know it's a sensitive topic so um please i'm i'm this is i have the the, the best intentions with this but in the u.s i was looking up some statistics from a website called save.org I found it today. And in the U.S. alone, somebody dies of suicide every 12.3 minutes. That's 38,000 people a year. Worldwide, it's 40 people a second die from suicide, 800,000 a year. And what the stats also show is that one out of every 25 attempts actually, um, actually dies. So that's 950,000 attempts a year, 20 million attempts worldwide. Why am I sharing that? Here's why I'm sharing that. The good news, okay? Our profession of network marketers, direct sales, entrepreneurs has some of the most life-giving, encouraging, amazing, on-fire people that I've ever met, worked yeah. with, or watched on video. And I asked my good friend at uh, Networking Times, Josephine, you know, thank you for, for getting back to me today. But I asked her how many people are in network marketing uh, in the U.S. and worldwide. 20 million of us in the United States, 103 million worldwide so here's my ploy or here's my 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 question for you is what if every day we just intentionally as a profession of some of the most encouraging people on the planet we just encouraged one person a day like we took our ha like our agenda to the side we took our selfishness for the side two minutes and we just we just encouraged one person a day guys there's 103 million of us global if we all just did that like surely we're going to reach some of the hurting people. Mm -hmm. And that was like the good news out of what I was seeing is even in the States, there's about 1 million attempts a year and there's 20 million of us. We got 20 to one, like we're, we're, we can win this, you know, and, I, and I'm just fired up about it. Um, I've never 
had that dealt with that personally, but in our family and some friends. And so our, um, our wish for you is that you would really adopt this phrase of becoming or this title of becoming a professional encourager. And just go out today without your motives, encourage people. You're going to get into more conversations. You'll find walls coming down, doors opening up. And again, this all can tie back into the cold market prospecting series that we're doing, growing your business. It's just a, um, it's just a win-win. So I want to do one more thing before I end, but I just want to make sure see if Michelle has any closing thoughts or, or comments. Um, I would just say that I, I noticed a difference with um, our fulfillment when we adopted that mindset of being, becoming a professional encourager, that the fulfillment of our business, like just the feelings that we had um, of our business completely changed and it improved yeah. and it was just it became a lot more fun you know because you're in the beginning it was like gosh I gotta go prospect and you know it was a lot of the awkwardness because it was forced mm -hmm. and now it's like wow the, like amazing things really do happen yeah. when your radar is out and you're just out there ready to help people no matter what it is you know so it's just it just makes life a big adventure like Life is already an adventure being yeah. network marketing, but when you're just out there touching people and you're just being, you know, with that heart of love, it, it just, you know, it just makes it a lot more fun. It is fun. And if people, if you encourage someone and they take it the wrong way, just hurt for them instead of being hurt by them. Like just extend grace and just know that your motives were for the right reason. And I just want to end on this note. I know that there might be some watching that actually are dealing with maybe some of that loneliness or depression or just kind of feeling like if you want to be encouraged, the best way to solve that is just give it away. Like go encourage and you'll be encouraged. It's, it's a pretty easy solution. It's not always easy to do, um, but that's the best fix mm -hmm. that we found. So if any of you guys, um, hey Jessica, thanks hey. for joining us. If any of you guys are, are watching and you're like, that's me, like I really need encouragement. Um, yeah. Oh, I, along those lines, I just felt the need that I needed to share this mm -hmm. is I've, I've battled with depression. I had postpartum depression. It was mm -hmm. really horrible. And I also battled anxiety. So if that is you, like I, I can get a sense of where you are, you know, and so yeah. yeah, I think you were getting at that, that they could contact us. Yeah. And I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to actually close in prayer. Uh, we've never done that on a Facebook live, but, um, we just, uh, we just know that God has amazing plans for you, that uh, we know your eternal value, and uh, depression, anxiety, none of that is part of your original design. And so, yeah, Lord, we just pray that right now you would just bless those that are watching on the replay, that are watching live. And um, Lord, we just ask that you would overwhelm whatever overwhelms them right now, that you would just cover them in radical, radical, aggressive love. And we just speak against any depression, any anxiety, the spirit of suicide, and we break that off in the name of Jesus. And we just pray that you would draw them into a community, into an atmosphere where they can grow, where they can have um, accountability, God, and where they can ask for help because that's really where they find strength. There's no weakness in, in, uh, in asking for help. There's actually courage and strength. And that was said by a, a pastor buddy of mine actually recently. So, so Father, we just bless them and we just ask that you would wrap your arms around them and you would just break off any root that's not from you in Jesus' name. Hey guys, thanks for watching. And uh, if you got encouragement from this, um, number one, share it and let some other friends know. But what we would love to do is go encourage somebody today and then come back to this post and comment what you did, not to show off, but to give people ideas of what they could simply do. Send a text, make a call, like buy somebody a meal. If you're at Starbucks, like just buy the coffee behind you, whatever it is, as small, as little, or as big as it is, uh, go encourage somebody today. Come back and comment below because I'd love to hear your ideas. They're probably things we haven't thought of. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in. We're gonna get back to work. Uh, hope you guys have an amazing day. <laughs> I don't know how to